Along with any new platform release comes the onslaught of motherboards from basically every manufacturer on the globe. Options will explode onto the scene from companies like ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, ECS, Intel, and more. Today I wanted to quickly walk through the collection of X79 motherboards we have amassed for the release of the new Sandy Bridge eCPU from Intel and show off the differentiating features between them. On the table we have three motherboards from ASUS, including the Rampage 4 Extreme, the P9 X79 Pro, and the Sabertooth X79. From MSI we have the X79A GD65 8D, from Gigabyte the X79 UD3, and from Intel their own DX79SI. There are some features that are more or less uniform across all of the X79 offerings, such as the LGA 2011 socket, a new retention clip for a new Intel high-end enthusiast desktop part. This socket actually has two retention arms that have to be opened for processor installation, like so. The DDR3 memory slots are configured in a new way as well, split half and half on either side of the LGA 2011 socket. Some boards will have four slots, others will have eight slots, thanks to the new quad-channel memory controller of Sandy Bridge E. While configurations will still vary from board to board, most X79 motherboards will have many PCI Express slots, thanks to the inclusion of 40 lanes of PCIe on the new Intel processor. While SLI and Crossfire support could still vary, I would expect nearly all of them to be gamer-friendly. All of them also have support for PCI Express 3.0 connections, though we don't have any PCIe 3.0 ready components or graphics cards yet to put that to the test. Let's take a deeper look at all of these boards, starting with the ASUS models. The high-end, drool-worthy option is of course the Rampage 4 Extreme, and it offers a ton of unique features. There are eight DIMM slots for up to 64 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, PCI Express by 16 slots spaced out to accommodate four-way SLI or Crossfire, eight SATA ports, four USB 3.0 ports, Bluetooth, and quite a bit more. Unique to this board are items like the OC key that applies an overlay on your computer for monitoring and hardware-based overclocking in any environment. XSocket is a bracket to allow users to install their LGA1366 cooler if they want. VGA Hotwire allows VGA overvolters to monitor and change GPU voltages in software. And Subzero Sense is a feature to monitor temperatures during LN2 overclocking. There is plenty more to this motherboard than that, and we will feature it later, but it should go without saying that the MSRP of $459 is going to be warranted. The Sabertooth X79 is an option from ASUS that focuses more on reliability than specific overclocking features. This board again has eight DIMM slots, an active chipset cooler, and support for multi-GPU configurations, but with items like thermal armor that directs airflow at the chipset and rear I.O. section, and thermal radar that calculates fan speeds based on numerous temperature sensors on the board, the Sabertooth continues in the ASUS Tough series. The P9 X79 Pro might seem like a more basic model from ASUS, but it still has a lot of great features, including eight DIMM slots, passive cooling on the chipset, and room for at least three-way SLI or Crossfire. Other goodies you'll find on the Pro are SSD caching support from an integrated Marvell chipset, four USB 3.0 ports, BIOS flashback support for updating your BIOS even without a CPU installed, USB 3.0 boost for improved performance on upcoming USB 3.0 devices that support UASP, and a lot more. The software suite that ASUS includes with the different X79 boards is very impressive as well, and we'll be diving into that more in the near future. MSI's offering for the X79 launch here at PC Perspective is the X79A GD65 8D motherboard that continues on the trends of military class components and the newer, much improved Click BIOS 2 UEFI implementation. This board also includes eight DIMM slots, as the 8D would indicate, and passive cooling all the way around. There are five PCI Express by 16 slots on board, and the layout would facilitate three-way SLI or Crossfire configurations. The board does include a pair of USB 3.0 ports on the rear I.O. panel and also includes a dongle for two more ports. OC Genie has made its way to the X79 platform as well for some easy one-push overclocking capability, but if you're more adventurous, the included overclocking guide actually has a lot of good information for people learning about X79 and Sandy Bridge E for the first time. Gigabyte sent along its X79 UD3, one of the lower cost options for users looking to dive into the world of Sandy Bridge E. Even with the low price, the board will still have quite a nice feature set, including the new 3D BIOS and 3D Power PWM, passive chipset cooling, and support for four-way SLI and Crossfire with the well-spaced PCI Express slots. This is the only board of our first installment that has four DDR3 memory slots, but for users that are comfortable with only 16 gigabytes of memory, that should be okay. 
There are four USB 3.0 ports on the rear I.O. panel and a port for a front panel USB 3.0 connection as well, which is nice to see on a lower cost solution. Intel's own X79 board, the DX79SI, continues the company's efforts to build enthusiast class components to pair with enthusiast class CPUs. The board design is pretty clean, and we see even Intel went with an 8 DIMM configuration for the flagship offering. The chipset cooling is passive, and the PCI Express layout will work with up to three dual slot graphics cards for both SLI and Crossfire. Intel's board is the only one to include the minimum of six SATA ports on the internal storage connections, so if you think you might need that extra expandability, keep that in mind. The BIOS on the DX79SI looks kind of dated now in the world of options from ASUS, MSI, and the likes, but it has more than enough features to satisfy most enthusiasts. There are two USB 3.0 ports on the rear I.O. with a front panel header on the board for two more. Expect this board to retail for around 280 bucks. I know this isn't all of the information you need to make an informed decision about selecting an X79 motherboard for your Sandy Bridge e-build, but it's a start. We are planning on having more detailed looks with these boards and more that are incoming in the upcoming weeks. I'm Ryan Shrout for PC Perspective. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out PCPer.com for more reviews and information on everything PC hardware.